Okay, well, uh, we just uh, figured out we have a common artist that we're inspired by. Yeah. Which is uh, Stanislav Szukalski. And I recently, I discovered Szukalski like the late, I mean, around the time when I when the breakthrough started happening actually mm. in my life which was so so um needed you know this inspiration that i found there mm. and he reminded me of my grandfather so much exactly like, i had you, the same you have the same thought because Absolutely. you knew my grandfather right what you said earlier about uh, your your grandfather advising you don't look about like uh, others don't don't think about Be the, just, the opposite Exactly. Just go, go go against the current, and and it's like, and even their physics, you know, were somehow similar. They were exactly like the, you know, uh, yeah. Shukowski was a bit older. He was before, but I I am not hundred percent sure, but I'm pretty sure that at some point when I was a teenager, my grandfather was telling me about Shukowski. Oh. And I think he was inspired by him a oh, lot. No. Uh, but you know, it's because the the name was familiar always. Can we have the album, please? Yeah. So uh, check out uh, this uh, this album. I think it's out like in different languages. Struggle. I mean, I'd say I'd say before you check out any albums, you know, just go on Netflix and there is uh, the Art and Struggle of Stanislav Szukowski, which is one of the best documentaries on uh, art and art. Any artist, basically, it's so uh, heartbreaking. Oh, it's yeah. so inspiring in, in so, on so many levels. And uh, it's, so, it's, it's so inspiring to the point that, uh, that I got my... Uh, like, oh, you got the Copernicus. Copernicus tattoo. Damn, uh, for real. Yeah, for real, yeah. Shit. So, yeah. I had no idea. You know, I saw that you were changing the, the whole uh, tattoo thing. But I had no idea that you have this one. I mean, and it's, it's such a heartbreaking story with, uh, uh, with uh, what, what's his name, uh, uh, the friend of Glenn. Glenn. Glenn, Glenn which, uh, which saw that Copernicus postcard. In the, and, and then yeah. when, when Szukowski had a stroke and he, you know, and he, uh, yeah. he passed away soon after, but he fell in his flat and, and, he, and that postcard fell with him and there is like blood stains. And when Glenn, because he inherited uh, yeah. the, the everything after after Shukowski, and when when you know when that that part of the movie, it's like I mean I had tears in my eyes. I was like, wow, you know. Mm. And he found that that one postcard that connected them, and the, you know, and ended mm. the, the the friendship. That was quite amazing. And now I see it on your arm. <laughs> it's like it's yeah. crazy. I've seen this movie for not, I mean I think the ninth time with a friend of mine. Uh, lately, I, I started spreading the word. Like basically, yeah. I started watching since since a lot of people are in different parts of the world. I organized this like uh, a small um, online. You know, we watch the movie online, and oh, at wow. the same time seeing each other. I'm like, you know, you got to yeah. see this movie, and and I did it for ni nine times already. You know, wow. and and it never gets boring that never, movie. Never. And uh, and there's so many. Uh, so many parts of it so uh, like in the in his history that i can uh, kind of relate to with mm. with my history but not like putting myself up there you mm. know obviously shukowski is one of the best uh, uh, uh artists of the 20th century yeah absolutely brilliant. and uh, and and a brilliant mind and a lost mind at some point some way but you know but overall it's such a real story and mm. it's such a real story about uh the human mistakes we make when the, when we are young and yeah. and and then you know how how uh, his life changed he lost everything and he mm. was unknown and banned and he, and he was a refugee and uh, he was an outcast basically and he was um uh he was he was kind of like yeah an enemy basically like persona non grata in a, in a, you know for communists you know that's why his name was never brought up in any books um, uh, in any schools, you know, basically yeah. he was like the, the 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 ruling party, you know, like some, some like some like like some people who would decide, you know, they would just they decided to to bury him, you know, to yeah. But you know, I was I was attending an art school, yeah, and and I had history of art, that, yeah. and nobody told me about Shukalski, you know, that that's like, yeah. or maybe I just don't remember, or and I wasn't paying attention, but I don't uh, think so because you know I would 
totally get into that even when I was in a when I was a teenager. So okay, so what is um, do you have like a pers like a personal favorite quote from or like a moment from the movie? What is it? What is that? Well, uh, I think it's the it's the main thing the 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 opposite uh, tongue and um, the opposite finger you know the struggle which oh, okay, okay. represents the struggle mm. because that's uh, that's the that's the quality that's the that's what my grandfather was teaching me basically mm. which i understand now which is what which is like go against the stream okay. and, and and but also uh, there's a connection yeah yeah the with, black metal with connection black metal yes it's very of course maybe even he started that Yeah, probably because that was made like <laughs> what early 20th century, decades ago, so, decades you know, ago. You know, so uh, Fenris and you know and yeah. uh, and uh, Ulve, yeah. our common friend, they should, they probably love yeah. Tchaikovsky, right? <laughs> they, yeah, they must have. <laughs> hey, uh, my favorite part is the quote when he speaks of art, like fartists. Fartists is cool and yeah. big asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fartists is amazing. <laughs> But um, I remember, you know, like, like every now and then I get shit for just, you know, maybe overdoing. Like I got like mm, not accused, you know, but like, oh, you're overdoing. It's too big, too much, you know, oh, and right. stuff. And I like I remember when I got so connected when he was thinking, no, art, art should be exaggerated. It should and be he like, did that move, yeah. This, this, and I'm like. Now we're talking. That's exactly how I perceive yeah, yeah. art. You know, it can be like, oh, I'm sorry, no, no, I'm an artist. You know, I'm gonna be like super minimalist. No, go again, go opposite, contrary to that. Fucking big as stretch it. You know, yeah, and stretch it, just expand it, and and uh, transgress. And that is the the definition of of art to me. And I felt so connected with that. You know, so I kind of stole that quote. And uh, I'm 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 just recording that, and uh, talking about it because because I'm defending my approach yeah. to art, you know, which is which is very, so to say, um, uh, Byzantine, so to say, mm -hmm. or just big and 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 stuff. So yeah, um, very yeah. important, very you know, significant for, for, words. For, uh, this this quote is is definitely one of, one of my. I mean that moment and and uh, what it says actually, what it means. It's totally my grandfather as well. You know, he was always like, mm. "You have to exaggerate what you're doing. You know, you, you have to stretch it out." Mm. And you know, my way is is the contrast. You know, your mm. way is the you know is the big way. You know, mm. and I I always do like contrast in the music. And I I was kind of a uh, limited for for mm. you know because I was doing it with uh, with five other people up till now, mm. let's say, or three other people and whatever, mm. but. It was me kind of giving a rhythm to it, mm -hmm. and you know it wasn't the right chemistry. I thought it's the right chemistry, you know. Mm. But I, I, you know, it's not that I am like regretting anything I did right now. It's just a lesson learned that I don't no want to make. No remorse and no regrets, right? Yeah, exactly. So I don't want to create in the in the same way I was creating up till now because I couldn't do that, mm. which you know, which you just said. And right now, I have a liberty of doing anything. And mm. my partners in, uh, you know, in the music uh, that we are doing now, you know, they have the, those liberties too. And mm. and you know, we we are kind of uh, inspiring each other. And I'm like, hey, do you know Shukalski? You know, mm. and and then they are like, oh, holy shit, you know. And 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 there is this common understanding behind mm. it. You know, let's reach out to the extremes. Mm -hmm. And let's reach out, you know, to the soft as well, because you know what what I am doing, what I was always trying to do with music is tell the story that I feel mm. to tell tell what's happening. Yeah, sure, it's telling you know, the story. But, it's telling, but uh, what Shukalski did, I mean, not not everybody can do that. You know, it's not like, but it's just like uh, you have to learn the lesson from uh, from from uh, what what's in there, what's in this story that you can actually be more creative and be more interesting as an artist if you if you understand what this uh this funny old man you know <laughs> uh, w had to say basically absolutely but what you just told me is actually uh you have some uh some of his works at home right yeah i mean i'm for like years now i've 
you know, I've been collecting stuff, you know, from different artists that I admire. And uh, just sometimes I just, uh, but you know, it's not investments. It's just, I like something and I want yeah. to possess that, you know, and I want to put it in a wall and uh, just be surrounded with, with pieces of art that I find inspiring and, and you know, that somehow would, would drive me. So yeah, I, I own few pieces. I own few original. I'm, I'm, I'm like for example, Copernicus. Yeah. I have the pr because the only printouts are available, but I have the printout with uh, his signature. Oh. And uh, with some sigils that he drew on it. And uh, same for another Copernicus that is less known. This is the the, the other one that is just like. It's like like blue colored, you know, like an imposter with Copernicus just yeah, I saw know, that. in this position. Yeah. Oh, same story, you know, I have the, the original signatures nice. and I have some, uh, like, some like because I've I met a guy lately in Warsaw who just offered me like a bunch of stuff, you know, from him, even the golden uh, Copernicus uh, coin that was okay. printed. There was like. I don't know. It was maybe seventy in in the in the seventies. They would just print like a limited number of Copernicus coins, you know, just okay. occasional like coins. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. You know. So I got this one and some other prints that were they were like his uh, writings on oh, uh, some some printouts. Wow. So, so next time I see you, I'm gonna show it to you. It's really cool. And um, yeah, so just the little things, you know. But um, but I'm, I'm happy to own them. Yeah, well, you know, I'm so grateful I actually found this. I mean, it's thanks to mm. Netflix and Leonardo and George DiCaprio, basically, yeah. that made this possible because I had no idea that, you know, our fellow Polish man, you know, basically was the Michelangelo of 20th century. That's how he was described. And I, I don't think it's, it's, uh, it's quite accurate. It's quite... Uh, the description is yeah well it's a description you know but it's but uh, it's it's uh, i mean he was a great artist he was he absolutely was a brilliant mind and uh yeah exceptional absolutely yeah but of the size of of the guys like michelangelo or you know yeah i mean he's never gonna i mean like not that we are his ambassadors now in a way we are you know like on a small scale you know we just you know um we adore that guy and we get inspiration from that guy and uh yeah well you know f f i just recently discovered him yeah. uh, when when was the when 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 did you discover him a few i mean like a few when, years ago no when the what was it two three years ago when the documentary was up okay i just watched it and i was like holy holy fuck okay and um then i started just you know looking around you know for you know for his art you know, mm -hmm. in all the galleries and, and maybe some auctions. And that's how I, you know, won some of them. But uh, the next thing I want to do, and I will do that, and I hope that I'll, I'll succeed, is uh, probably October, November, if it's possible, uh, logistically, hopefully, I hope it is. I want to fly to US just to do some band business, mm -hmm. but, uh, but I'll be in LA. So I really want to reach out to Glenn, oh, and, I, damn. And, I, and I know he's um, he's a very communicative <laughs> person. He's a cool guy because I know people that are in touch with him. Okay. So I think it's he's not like out of reach, and he's just secluded. Oh, he himself. seemed that way basically. He, yeah. So I really want to reach out to him, and I just want to make new friends, and just you know. Yeah, and he's got all the archives, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, whatever. I'm just, I'm just happy to know the guy and maybe visit his place, you know. And because I know that, like, some of the, uh, some of the artists, like, and musicians that we, mm -hmm. we know and we're friends with sometimes, and and, and we worship, like, Tool guy, yeah, like, uh, Adam Jones. Yeah. He's he's a huge he's a huge collector of Shukalski's art. Like, he's got like few pieces, and and they're really amazing. So. Um, and there's more and more that I'm discovering. Like, okay. Every like now and then, I just come across you know people that like that you know that we share the same mutual fascination of the guy. So, oh, when we were at that, how did it happen that you ended up at uh, Tool rehearsal? Because you've been at Tool rehearsal. Yes. Right? How did yeah. it happen? Uh, just uh, Justin just reached out to me and it's like, hey, okay. we're doing this like we're playing the full record like in f like new album in full <laughs> and it was like year before it was out or two yeah, yeah. years, 
I remember, yeah. Yeah, and uh, like we're playing in it full, you know, just just instrumentally. If you want to just come down, there's going to be like five people total. Just wow, join us. So 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 uh, I did die, and uh, and I was just you know I was overwhelmed, just sitting in the middle of this not really big place. It's not very big. It's like half the size of this probably. Ah, uh, right? tops. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, half of the size, and. Uh, and like very moody, like the, like the dark lightings, and 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 really cool, but but, but cozy, you know. After all, it, it was Ru like a, like a like a rehearsal room, like a know? rehearsal room exactly. in the middle of LA, studio. in yeah. the middle of LA, some back door. You, you just get there for, through some back door, and but that's LA, man. That's I remember, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like I remember a friend of mine who just dropped me at the at the uh, at the LAX. Mm -hmm. Good friend of mine. He's just giving me a lift to Alex, you know. And then, so just I know, I I know that if I had stayed one day longer, I would be there. So he just dropping me off. And next thing I got from him is like, you know what happened? On the way back from the airport, you know, I got a phone call from a friend of mine who said, you know what, Depeche Mode has a pre-production like before the tour pre-production at this and that studio. Come down and watch it with me. There's uh, five people here. You know, it's like no audience, just the band rehearsing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can be there and just watch it. You know, just don't film anything, don't make photos, and 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 but just be be there. So of course, you know, if I was with him on the call, I would I would just end up, you know, seeing a national rehearsing. <laughs> like, wow. But, but that's LA, you know, like yeah. stuff, like things like that do happen on daily basis, you know, because everyone just goes there and rehearse and plays and. You you know you you just you just come across people in the street and yeah. you go to the fucking I don't know I went to see um, what was it that was uh, some um, I think it was Glenn's uh, no it wasn't no it was um, the premiere of Rob Zombie last movie or the previous yeah. one now I don't remember and, like you see all these people like you know like Machete and, like all yeah, these guys yeah, yeah. And, like <laughs> they're standing next to you it's like that's LA you know like I yeah. remember I, I was just. I would attend a Misfit show, and we're standing in the hallway, and Jerry only, and like taking photos with other people, and we just, I'm, 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 I'm sitting next, like standing next to the guy, and we're just, you know, having like, just laughing at stuff and just, you know, gossiping, blah 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 blah, and after like a few minutes, I'm like, I'm looking at him. Uh, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> and that was um, Mike Patton. All oh, right. Oh, he's got the yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Like, like, this, this, like this, ponytails. Yeah, yeah ponytails, and and he was just like <laughs> super like modest and just standing there, and we're just you know fucking around, you know, yeah, just yeah, yeah. like oh my. Yeah, I remember you know because uh, because we did the first uh, first U.S. tours uh, yeah. uh, that Behemoth ever did, and uh, that was a hell of a ride. But I will never forget, you know, because I touched that a little bit when we played with Danzig. Yeah. Uh, that was the, the blackest of the black, and we were in the what was it, uh, Universal Theater or something? Or where did we play with Danzig? Yeah, in? Gibson. Yeah, G yeah. Gibson. But I remember there was like in the backstage there was uh, well, that's just everyone. insane. Like Fucking you know, oh, there's like, the guy oh, yeah. from System of a Down. There's like you know, yeah. uh, you, you easily get starstruck. Yeah. In, in LA, like you know, you just you're gonna be in the right, in the right time, right place. And you're gonna meet all these people, but you know, but that, uh, I mean, we already went back to that moment, but never viral. But I will never forget because I'm a huge Pantera fan since I was a oh, kid, yeah, yeah. and you know, the, on the bill we had Super Joint Ritual on that those gigs with uh, yeah. Danzig, right? No. And uh, we, I remember, we, we played Phoenix, Arizona, I think. We played Phoenix, but are uh, you talking about... Uh, Phil Phil, Phil like, mm. Yeah, yeah, the, we were sitting having a beer or something. Outside back, of uh, Gibson. Uh, outside, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then there was Phil Anselmo walking with his girlfriend off, off the stage after the gig or something. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and we were like, hey, good show, man. And, and then he, he asked his girlfriend, who are these guys? You know, and, yeah, that's the guys from Behemoth. And he came to us and yeah. he sang the intro from, what from, was that? Uh, he, he started humming from the Pagan Westlands uh, demo, like the, from Hornet Lens to Lindis Farn. He was, yeah. uh, he was, he was uh, under influence. Oh yeah, definitely. But, but he was like, I love that part, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. was cool. 
<laughs> that was ah. the, the, those like my good friend, that yeah. same Mario uh, Konyo, uh, who dropped me at the LX. You know, he would tell me some other like um, um, uh, stories. You know, with um, you know some iconic people in LA, and one of my absolutely favorite stories from his is um, he would just as a kiddo wait, you know, outside some shows, you know, and he would just come across like, like an Ozzy Osbourne and uh, he's like, and he's telling me that, man, like Ozzy Osbourne was cool to take a photo and, and like, they were like super friendly and cool. And then I end up at this party, you know, and I see this fucking Anthony Kitty standing in front of me. So I just approach him like in the most polite, you know, way. And I ask him, and that is amazing. I love it. <laughs> and I just pat him on the back and he would just turn towards me was like and I asked him like in a super polite way Anthony would you mind if I take a photo with you and he goes like absolutely not <laughs> okay well I, I can I can't love it more than I do yeah, yeah. I, I think it's amazing <laughs> you know why because you actually I mean it's cool if people do that I usually do that yeah and um uh, but it, on many occasions, you know, fans, you know, don't, they just, they just, they just all over you, you know, they, yeah. they don't know where the border, uh, where the, or, yeah, when the boundaries are, you yeah. know, when they don't know, they don't feel that. You fuck, you're in a restaurant, you know, having a date with a lady and, oh, there go, there, can we take a photo? No. And, and that somehow that inspired him, that inspired me to, um, uh, to say no in a very assertive but polite way. Yeah. So I have no problems with saying, I'm sorry. This is a private meeting. Yeah. I'm having a date. Uh, hopefully next time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, I'm happy to see the reactions, which nine out of 10 are like, yeah, I respect that. Sorry for disturbing. See yeah, you next yeah. time. Can I just shake your hand? Of course you can. Yeah, exactly. And that is cool, you know? That is cool. So. And I kind of learned, I developed that uh, um, skill to say no in a polite way because sometimes you just but must say no. But also don't go st starstruck in front of uh, like your, your idols, right? I don't do that. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, I had, I had, I have really a few examples that I didn't, I couldn't stop myself, you know, uh, that was Jerry Cantrell in Australia. And, and I and, approached him as well. He was cool. Yeah, but, but he was like, he was reluctant. He, he was, was like, he was when I when I when I approached him, but I was like, dude, you know that that guy. I mean, now I, I couldn't stop myself. Yeah. You know, I I usually I mean I stopped myself. I actually had a friendly time with Jess Coleman, you yeah. know, which is one of my my iconic uh, idols yeah. as well. I know it's yours too, but yeah. you guys know each other. But I met him once at a festival, and and he just I mean I uh, he just came like we we had some some really technical issues like there was some payment issues with the headliners mm. and I was w working with one of the headliners and he came in to ask if we have the same issues as they have oh. and for some reason he asked me and mm. I was just the crew you know and but mm. then I started talking to him because nobody else reacted actually and I'm mm. like fucking Jas Coleman is asking if we have mm. issues and I'm yeah. like okay I'm gonna talk to you man so I started mm. talking to you and I ended up in the backstage room with 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 him because he he was just an you know there was a human connection yeah and you know and that's better yeah right absolutely you know th that's better if you if you if you see uh, somebody that you that you just yeah. you know uh, appreciate so much as an artist I mean, treat them like a like yeah. a human being, you and, know, and the first time. Yeah, and don't don't. I mean, don't. I mean, like I got people. I uh, I'm being approached in the way that people are like, <gasps> like treating me like uh, I'm like way more special than. Uh, no, yeah. I'm not. Just treat me like like an equal. We are equals. Okay. That's a stereo stereotype as well. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just equal, one to one. That's it. That's how it should work. So. Uh, another story, uh, which is cool, I think, you know, um, we played a uh, Hellfest and uh, Manowar was supposed to play at Hellfest. I'm a huge Manowar fan. And I saw Joey DiMaio talking to some important people next table. And the situation was like very relaxed and loose, you know, it wasn't like, so he just went up, you know, to grab a coffee or something. So I approached him, Joey, hey, I'm with the band, blah, blah, blah. Can we take a photo? And he's like, I'm sorry, I'm having a very important uh, meeting now with my attorneys. 
So I have to say no, no problem. Thank you so yeah. much. Bam, bam, bam. And I, I'm like, no offense taken. Why? Why I should, you know, yeah. be offended? Why? I mean, like, if you're asking for something, you have to accept that the answer might be, be no. no. <laughs> and deal with it. There's yeah. no problem with that whatsoever. But then again, you know, like the, the outcome of the situation was um, quite uh, devastating to me because as a fan, I was looking forward to the show and that a tor like meeting with his, his attorneys and, uh, and health as people, they were negotiating, they were renegotiating the deal and they were dropped off the bill on the same day and they canceled. They didn't play the show. Yeah, yeah, I know that. And I was yeah. like, Fuck! <laughs> I was so bummed, you know. It was such a bummer for me that um, not that I didn't get a photo. I, I, I because I've never seen Man of War. See, so yeah. I, I'm such a big fan. <clears throat> I've never seen a Man of War live, so I'm really looking forward to the to the uh, upcoming tour next year. So, dude, yeah. I had the I had the funniest story with the. Uh, with one of my idols uh, that I met in the hotel uh, mm. lobby. I mean, actually, I was in the in the elevator, and uh, I was going down. It was Norway Tons of Rock, mm. uh, but not the the one in Oslo. The the one that was like in a in the in this like small city. Yeah, yeah. the castle. The castle. Oh, yeah, it was beautiful. So awesome. there was only there was only a few hotels there. Mm. Everybody was there, and. And, um, mm, you know, Thin Lizzy, the, the new Thin Lizzy, you know, mm. uh, uh, was there. And Scott Gorham is one of my favorite guitar players. Like, mm. you know, him and Gary Moore in, in Thin Lizzy, that was my favorite guitar duo mm. ever. And but especially Scott Gorham's, you know, like mm. the, the melodies and everything. Mm. And, and um, yeah, that's one of the artists that I uh, really wanted to have a picture with someday, mm. you know, and mm. he's quite... He's got his age, you know, and everything. So, and I had no idea that they are staying in the same hotel. Mm -hmm. And I was going down for breakfast in the lobby. So I'm in the elevator. I'm going down, and the elevator door opens, and there's this, there's this old man standing with his back to you know to me. And I'm like, I'm getting out, and he didn't hear anything. And he turned out in the same moment, he, he, I scared the shit out of him. <laughs> he was just, he, I was like, fuck, you know, he jumped and everything. And, and I was like, dude, <laughs> I almost scared Scott Garam to death, you know. <laughs> he could have a heart attack, you know, basically. Uh, it was crazy. And, and then I was like, holy shit, that's Scott Garam actually that I scared. And? I didn't take the picture because okay. he, he went into the elevator and the elevator door yeah, closed. But so, yeah, I, I, you know, <laughs> I, I found myself in situations, you know, when I would just see if I can let me being like, it was, it was after, it was Hellfest, he was just playing flippers, you know, in the, in the hallway of the, of the backstage area. Uh, but he was, I could see that it was his thing, his time. He was, yeah. he was boozed, he was uh, tired. And it, let's say it was like, I don't know, seven years ago or eight, I don't remember. But I was like, I was looking at him and like, nah. That's not the moment. Yeah, yeah, wrong momentum. I don't want to be that guy. We just, took a picture with him together, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> but I walked away. I'm like, nah. So something like, I yeah. try to, you know, just to see and is it okay or is it not okay? Yeah, just, but, it's, uh, just it's think kind about of, it. uh, but it's kind of easier from our perspective that we, we kind of uh, live in the yeah, scene, yeah. you know, yeah. and... And then you start, and then you learn. But you know, but regular like fans that never get to see how yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, there is right. this myth of how how the backstage looks like, or you know how the how the icons are actually in person. They're and, probably shitting gold. Yeah, exactly. Instead of a regular crap. Actually, uh, uh, one of the cut songs was uh, no, that was Alcatraz, Pan Gold. Pan Gold. I never got into Alcatraz. Check it out. Really? After Era, years. Era album. Yeah, I heard it's, it's, it's just it's, one. I mean, there's there's a few songs which you're gonna probably love now because you're more open-minded. You know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm a weirdo, so that's, that's just I'm gonna like. <laughs> well, Shukowski ended up in the weirdo uh, magazine. You remember? Which one? <laughs> yeah, the, in the movie, the uh, you know they uh, they started they, there was this oh, yeah, yeah, weirdo yeah, yeah. zine or something. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so maybe so maybe weirdo could be a gateway to you know. To learn about things. Yeah, I mean, you got to be a weirdo and you have to accept it, you yeah. know, because we're all weirdos, basically. And 
and we if, if we accept it and we deal you know learn how to use it and on our in our advantage you know that's that's like the way to success probably you know yeah <laughs> because being weird is a is a positive thing can be a yeah positive. i remember uh when we were out i mean like behemoth first records were out on pagan records so pagan of course pagan means that is that you're pagan you're a heathen but uh, i really like the you know someone just made up that shortcut for pagan which is uh people against god and normality yeah and i really love that i love that too when i when i realized you know the first time yeah it's awesome. <laughs> that's it's so awesome, awesome. It's awesome. the awesome. double meaning you know yeah yeah it's killer yeah Okay, man. Well, I think we can uh, uh, wrap it up. Wrap it up. Yeah. I so, wish uh, uh, I wish you all the best with the new record and the the Me and That Man record that is coming. Me and That Man and Behemoth, all in progress. All is happening uh, slow because the world slowed down now. Yeah. But it's happening. Thank you so much for that. Uh, cross fingers for your um, uh, new creations with uh, Swedish dudes. Yeah. And uh, this is prob this is definitely not the last time we're talking. No, definitely. And uh, thanks for staying with us. It was uh, it was a really inspiring and, and and refreshing conversation that we had. Some of the stories just got like a better uh, because I don't rem like n not everything I remember well because there's been plenty. Yeah, yeah, of course. But uh, some of the stories just you know I put in order now. So thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> We might continue. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for watching. And thanks again, man. Cheers. Cheers. Uh.